Welcome to the 2018 St. Bernard Central Catholic High School commencement exercises. At this time, I would ask our chaplain and pastor of St. Bernard at St. Camilla's Church, Father Joseph Dolan, to offer the invocation. Please remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, we ask you to be here with us as we celebrate the graduation of the class of 2018. Lord, watch over them and watch over us. May we feel your presence in our lives. May we know of your love for us. And help us, Lord, to grow in love for you each and every day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. At this time, I would like to welcome Bishop Robert McManus, Father Joseph Dolan, Superintendent Dr. David Perda, Commencement Speaker Mrs. Katie Boudreau, President of the Class of 2018 Tara Keating, Valedictorian Nicholas Bagley, Salutatorian Brian Hill, Distinguished Faculty, Parents, Grandparents, Brothers and Sisters, Aunts and Uncles, Relatives and Friends of the Class of 2018. Tonight we gather for the 92nd commencement exercise for St. Bernard's Central Catholic High School. We are also completing the year-long celebration of St. Bernard's 90th anniversary at 45 Harvard Street. Many Bernardians have come and gone from 45 Harvard Street over the years. That fact was never more evident to me than with the recent passing of Sister Joan Mulcahy, the reverence demonstrated at her funeral displayed the continued influence that she had and will continue to have on all things Bernardian. Sister Joan will be missed and never forgotten. Graduates, you are completing a four-year journey where you have been guided by family, friends, and a Catholic school that has held you to a standard of excellence. It is a nurturing of mind, body, and spirit. The school's maxim is love one another. Today I would like you to consider an addition to love one another, and that is listen to one another. In our present political and social climate, listen to one another has become the exception rather than the rule. The following quote is from the Dalai Lama. When you talk, you only are repeating what you already know. If you listen, you may learn something new. As graduating Bernardians, I hope that you truly do practice listen to one another in your future lives. While others may have opposing views and opinions on many topics, remember to always take the time to listen to what others have to say. You may still disagree after listening, but you don't have to be disagreeable to disagree. It is still possible to respect someone who you disagree with. Remember, listen to one another, and above all, love one another. As you come to the end of four years at St. Bernard's, your memories of successes and failures, celebratory times and difficult times will and should include God's presence. Your St. Bernard's education may lead you to great success, but if you forget that God is always with you, you'll be leaving the most important part behind. So seniors, put your seatbelts on, no talking or texting while operating your motor vehicles, 
I bid you farewell, and when we meet again, may it be in the A.M. It's an inside joke. <laughs> this time I'd like to introduce the president of the class of 2018. The president of the senior class, Tara Keating, has faithfully filled this role for all four years of high school. In addition, she has been a scholar, a dancer, an athlete. Tara is a member of the Nano Nagel chapter of the National Honor Society. She is co-president of Campus Ministry and a member of the Latin Club. Tara has studied dance at local studios since she was five years old. She has played Bernardian field hockey and served as varsity captain as a senior. In the fall, Tara will matriculate as an exercise science major in a dance minor at Sacred Heart University with the goal of becoming a physical therapist. Please welcome the president of the class of 2018, Tara Catherine Keating. Good evening, Bishop McManus, our superintendent, Dr. Perda, Father Dolan, Mr. Blanchard, faculty and staff, friends and family, alumni, and most importantly, my fellow classmates, the graduating class of 2018. My name is Tara Keating, and I have had the privilege of serving as class president for the past four years. I would like to start off by thanking those who have helped us so much over these last four years. We would like to thank Mr. Blanchard for keeping us all in line, as I'm sure at times we did not make it easy. We would like to thank Mrs. Driscoll and Mrs. Adam for always giving us guidance, especially throughout the hard process of college applications. We would like to thank our two class advisors, Ms. Hilton and Mrs. Laughlin, for all they have done in helping our class plan events and raise money. We would like to thank Mrs. Bell and Mrs. McHugh for being our wonderful and helpful class moms. We would like to thank Mr. Beauregard for keeping together such a strong athletic department for many of us to benefit from beyond the classroom. Lastly, we would like to thank our parents who put us on this path which led to the end of this chapter tonight. It's hard to believe we are standing here today as graduating seniors ready to embark on a new journey when it seems like just yesterday we walked through the doors of St. Bernard's for the first time freshman year. As Julie, our class historian, reminded us last night, these past four years have been like running a mile, sometimes sprinting, sometimes jogging, sometimes walking, sometimes limping, or sometimes even doubled over in pain. But we made it, and today we sit here at the finish line about to receive our medals, though some may have come easier than others. A question I am often asked is how many kids are in your graduating class at St. Bernard's? The resulting conversation always goes the same way. I respond with 39, and they respond with a very shocked look and sometimes even a negative comment. However, I have grown accustomed to these responses. For those of us who experience being part of such a small and close community like STB every day, we know that the positives far outweigh the negatives. There is something very special about our small class and community here. It's very unique to be able to say that you know every member of your class personally. And it's not everywhere that you can walk through the halls and know just about everyone you pass, whether they are freshmen, sophomores, juniors, or seniors. Some of us have even known each other since preschool, and tonight is another milestone to add to the list we have achieved together. And speaking of the past, a few of our parents even went to school together here at St. Bernard's a long, long, long time ago. <laughs> it's an honor to be a part of the long-lasting tradition of St. Bernard's and be the 90th graduating class on Harvard Street. Growing up, I was pretty much born into the St. Bernard's tradition. My great-grandmother, grandmother, parents, aunts, uncles, older cousins, and siblings have always spoken about the good times and crazy adventures, most of which I shouldn't repeat to you today, that they had while walking through these halls. They all met great people whom they still keep in touch with today, and they have all moved on to successful lives. I always knew I would be the next in line the last of my generation. I couldn't wait to meet the people in the class that would make my journey here so great. 
It's crazy to think all these years later, here we are, ready to reflect on all the memories we made over these four years in the very same halls and classrooms that they all did years ago. I'm sure I wasn't the only Keating that Mrs. Raymond had to speak to to take off their sweatshirt or tuck in their shirt, or that Mrs. Boudreau had to tell it was time to buy a new skirt because ours were too short. But those skirts really did last. I was wearing some of the skirts that dated back to the fall of 2003. And I definitely was not the only Keating that Mrs. Rula had to mark tardy on a few too many occasions. We are all extremely lucky to have been a part of this strong community that has and will continue for many years even after we graduate today. When it comes to the class I was fortunate enough to be a small part of, I could not have gotten any luckier. We have all written our own STB story that can be now told for years to come. We shared many good memories, laughed a lot, ate a lot of good food, and met a lot of awesome people along the way. We are a Chipotle-loving, Instagramming, Fortnite-playing, rap-singing, check out Jay Smooth's mixtape coming to SoundCloud soon, and Take Me Home Country Roads listening crowd. When you look around at each other, I hope you all see what I see. I see a group of people I will be connected with for the rest of my life, a group of people who gave me the best four years of my life yet, and a group of people who I'll forever be thankful for. In the beginning of the year, when it was time to choose senior quotes for the yearbook, I originally wanted to do a funny quote from the office, but due to higher authority, I had to change it at the last minute. But it turned out for the better. Thanks, Mr. Blanchard. Because my new quote turned out to relate really well to high school. I used Dr. Seuss's famous quote, you may never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. All the moments we shared together, from being scared little freshmen to senior prom and everything in between, some in this very gym are just a short walk down to the football field. Friday night football games, pep rallies, three-on-three -three tournaments, intense overtime basketball games, or cheering in the dog pound. These are now all memories we will cherish long after we are gone. So hold on to these memories and share them every chance you get. As our STV journey comes to a close tonight, and we move from being one out of 39 to one out of thousands, there are many lessons we can all take with us. We have now come full circle and are going to return to that scared freshman state we were in four short years ago. However, we are now all a little wiser and know that those days won't last. The next years are likely to go by even faster than the past four did. The work is going to get a little harder, but thanks to Mr. Bramson, we are not afraid to ask for the help we need. Thanks to our religion teachers, Mr. Constantino and Mrs. Raymond, we have learned that we can rely on God and our faith when things get difficult. And we have learned from one another how important friendships are in life. The strength of the relationships we have built have given us standards that our future friendships should live up to. Standards that may be hard to live up to, but I ask you please to never settle. Each one of you is special in a specific and unique way. Surround yourselves with people who bring out the best in you, as you have all done for me. I look forward to hearing about the adventures we will unlock in the years to come. Keep those Snapchats coming. I wish you all the best of luck in your next chapter. In conclusion, I ask that you promise me one thing. In whatever you do and wherever you go, promise me that you will forever keep the blue and gold close to your heart, because I know I will. Thank you. Thank you, Tara, for your words of welcome and for your service to our school. Our commencement speaker is the 2018 Teacher of the Year, Mrs. Kathleen Boudreaux. Each year since 1997, the Student Council has selected a member of the faculty to recognize for outstanding service to the St. Bernard's High School community. Mrs. Boudreaux is a longtime member of the St. Bernard's faculty. She is currently completing her 35th year of service. She joined the Bernardian family back in 1977 after teaching for a time at Holy Family High School. Mrs. Boudreaux taught religion and humanities early on in her career and even taught history for a year. From teaching mythology to sophomores to Shakespeare to seniors, 
and correcting hundreds of senior projects, Mrs. Boudreau has done it all with sincerity, kindness, and grace. Even more importantly, Mrs. Boudreau, Mrs. Boudreau is a woman of faith, which she freely shares with our school community. She lives the mission of St. Bernard's and the Presentation Sisters in her daily life. Mrs. Boudreau is generous with her time and talent, organizing our music ministry for all of our school-wide masses and many other services over the years. She is, an active in, she is active in her home parish, Our Lady of the Lake in Leominster. Mrs. Boudreau is blessed to have a beautiful daughter, Melissa. Mrs. Boudreau is a valued mentor, spending innumerable hours offering support, encouragement, and advice to all who seek it. She is always willing to help and to do whatever is needed, even to give a commencement address. Mrs. Boudreau has taught and inspired generations of Bernardian students. We are indebted to her many years of dutiful service to St. Bernard's. It is my honor to introduce our commencement speaker, the 2018 Teacher of the Year, Mrs. Kathleen Boudreau. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Bishop McManus, Superintendent Dr. Perda, Mr. Blanchard, Chaplain Father Dolan, Class President Tara Keating, Valedictorian Nicholas Bagley, Salutatorian Brian Hill, Golden Graduates, Esteemed Colleagues, proud parents, grandparents, siblings, and family members, supportive friends and alumni, and honored members of the class of 2018. It is wonderful to be all here together. It is so difficult to be insightful when all these faces are turned toward me expecting something. This is not my style. I am more the poet, the storyteller, this has been a real labor of love to prepare these thoughts. I had to remind myself of a sonnet I studied with my seniors in which Sir Philip Sidney, trying to break through his writer's block, gives himself this advice. Fool, look in thy heart and write. So tonight, I will tell you what is in my grateful heart. Jesus, friend and brother, send your spirit upon this gathering tonight in celebration of these graduates. Our hearts are full of love for them. Help all of them as they head into a future that will hold all its own twists and turns that they could never have anticipated. Help each one to find love in meaningful ways, to find challenge that will enable growth and to find fulfillment that his or her talents will be put to good use. Tonight, help me to touch their hearts with words that come far more from you than from me. I remember what it's like to be in high school. Even this many years later, though, I am still learning. I hope I will always be learning. And I have had some tough teachers in my time. But life is by far the hardest teacher of all. In Helen Keller's words, character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, ambition inspired, and success achieved. Think of how deeply her life was affected by her losses of vision and hearing. Yet, she managed to get a college degree and become a world-famous writer, speaker, and social activist. We all owe it to ourselves to learn from life. So life, that cruel teacher, will test you first and then explain the lesson. Class of 2018, never feel that you have learned everything and never feel that you are fully grown. For the person who stops growing starts to decline, and that's a worse fate than death. Be humble. The world does not owe you anything. 
Stop yourself from feeling superior to anyone else. Your life may just have allowed you advantages through no effort on your own part. Travel and meet people who will broaden your views. Read, listen, experience. The world has so much to offer. Living should be an education. And of course, dream. You must dream your dreams and then find a way to make them happen. A wise young woman recently told me that she had learned a person can only be successful at a goal if that goal involves doing something that he or she loves. So if you want something and want it with all your heart, you will find the way. Where would the world be without dreamers, without innovators? Yet, life has taught me that there is also a corollary to this theory. Life is, in fact, what happens while we're making other plans. I never wanted to be a teacher. I became a teacher as a means of joining the community of sisters founded by Nano Nagel. Yet, soon after I went into that first classroom in my alma mater of Holy Family, I was hooked. That was in 1974. For all but a few years since, I have been a teacher, and for most of those years, it has been my great happiness. Sometimes I think back on what the 18-year-old Katie thought her life would be, and I worry that I never reached my full potential. That I settled for being in such a normal career. But then, when I consider the impact that my life may well have had, I count my blessings that life sent me the opportunity to teach young minds in a Catholic school environment. I remember a wonderful young teacher of mine in high school whom I interviewed one time about being a teacher. Her response really surprised me. She told me that the most important thing for her was not whether we understood all the math that she taught, but if we could sense the love that she had for us. Remembering the effect her words had on me then, I have tried to bring love into the classroom ever since. I hope my students have felt it. Life is full of ordinary moments, which, when strung together, weave an extraordinary and unique pattern. God lives in the ordinary, and I, for one, am very glad that he does. I try to get my students to see that truth. I probably drive them crazy with some of the prayers I compose at the beginning of class, just using as inspiration a quick look at the weather, or an event that just happened, or even a chance comment someone made. But I want them to learn that God is in the everydayness of their existence. That doesn't make God ordinary, but it can allow each moment of each day to be sacred. For I believe that it is. God is the daily bread of our lives. Who wants food only on special occasions? Not I. I can remember my intro to philosophy class at college, taught by the quintessential professor in tweed, smoking a pipe, Dr. Dillon. He taught us that one of the first philosophers, Heraclitus, proclaimed that one could never enter the same river twice, for the person is not the same person, and the river is not the same river the second time. I've been thinking about that again this week, as I've considered how each person, each experience, each emotion changes us. Several of my students in their senior projects acknowledged that their parents and the love and support that they have always given them have provided over these years have made them the people that they are today. I hope they let their moms and dads hear that. They really are true. Well, to expand that, I believe that each person in our lives leaves some kind of mark on us. Some may leave a scar, while others have helped to heal or inspire or transform. 
I know I can trace pieces of myself to family, to teachers, to friends, even to those who seem to be trying to destroy me. All have had their effect. I can remember clearly my 16-year-old self, and I am very different now because of all my life experiences and the people behind them. I am a much better friend to myself now than I ever was as a student. Those six years spent with the sisters were especially important years. I carry with me the person they helped me to become. I would not be the same person without those many experiences or without the influences of those great women. Nor would I be the same without having become a wife and mother. Soon I will watch my daughter begin a new chapter of her life as the young man who has made a deep impression on her heart stands beside her and they bow themselves to a shared life. And my life story still has chapters to write and I have no way of guessing who I will be by the time the book finishes. That's not a scary thought. It's an exciting one. Life is incredible. A real adventure of the kind that we cannot necessarily plan. We just open ourselves to possibilities and each new experience will add something to life. Paradoxically, the only constant is change. I know you understand that. A group of seniors were in my room on the last day of classes and we're just chatting at the end of the period. One person made the comment that if he hadn't changed schools back in sixth grade, he might never have known the chemistry, might have never have known the people who are now his best friends. Soon others chimed in with similar angles to finally realize that what they shared together was largely a series of convoluted events that led each of them to become one another's classmates. It was an interesting thought that our lives are full of random events or so it seems to us, that in the long run, change the trajectory of many things. If each person we meet makes some kind of impression on us, then the lack of any one of those persons might also alter who we have each become. That is so profound. Of course, I don't really see any of it as random, since I think God has each of us in the palm of his hand. You will change, class of 2018. Never before have you been this exact person you are this evening, and never again will you be the exact person you are now. So the important thing is to make sure that you put yourself in the best possible environments so that the changes that will happen will have the best chance of heading you in the direction that you see as your direction. Don't let yourself get derailed. Remember that road less traveled? If that is where you want your life to go, you may need to separate yourself from what is comfortable now. You must be packing your own internal GPS system. For me, that GPS is God. St. Matthew quotes Jesus as saying, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. My treasure is my faith in God. And over the years, I have tried to model that faith for you. I've tried to help you see that God is as close to you as your own breath. I've tried to show you that God doesn't need eloquence from you, just your awareness. Just turn toward grace, and the Father will do the rest. And change doesn't have to be the enemy, but sometimes life hits us with a change that we did not seek nor want, and we have to cope with that new reality. This can be a defining moment in a person's life. A choice exists to let the change drown us, or we can tread water until we are able again to swim safely to a shore. Adversity often brings strength from deep within that we never knew we possessed. We probably grow more from the difficult situations in life than from the easy ones, but that growth occurs from our reflection on the struggle rather than just the struggle itself. If you can realize that you are not alone, swimming against the turbulent becomes much easier. Other changes will be intentional ones, 
that you have taken the time to prepare. Yet even those can have difficulties, for all change requires effort. One change you always have the right to claim is choosing the people you surround yourself with. Being around negative people is seldom worth it because it's doubtful that they'll stop being negative. Guard yourself. It's much more likely that their negativity will take its hold on you. Instead, find positive people who share some of your own attitudes. Surround yourself then with people who truly live their lives and have values worthy of your respect. The great Sufi poet Rumi writes, you were born with greatness, you were born with wings, you are not meant for crawling, so don't. You have wings, learn to use them and fly. One of our school's champions, Sister Joan Mulcahy, recently died. At her funeral, Sister Catherine Hannigan, one of my personal mentors, delivered a stirring eulogy. She recalled as her basis the words of Gandhi, my life is my message. What a beautiful thing to be true of any one of us when our life has reached its end, that we lived what we thought was the most important message to get across. Earlier this year also brought news of the death of Sister Mary Sullivan, who was a lovely and wise Irish presence at St. Bernard's for years in both the classroom and the guidance office. She left the stress of school for the toll it was taking on her physical health and retired to work in a poor section of Los Angeles. In those 20 years, she became a living saint for the people of Watts. Neither of these women was ever afraid to work hard or spend hours on small details. Both of them made tremendous impacts over the course of their lives. Both knew how to connect with people. Both knew how to love. Love is a fire that can purify this tired old world. How completely we need to learn how to harvest its creative power. Ask yourself, what will your message to the world be? What is worth your life? Your life is far too valuable to waste on just financial security or acclaim. Find something that is important enough to be your legacy. Winston Churchill once said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. How can you imagine yourself giving throughout your life? Everybody here wants to, you to be a success. We all have high hopes for you. We all are proud of what you've already accomplished. We love the people that you are now. And we will continue to love the people that you become. But we also know that making dreams come true is not easy. It will take a variety of factors for you to find success, and only some of these factors are within your control. You need to consider quite seriously what your definition of success for your life would mean. I beg you not to just let it be based on salary. Consider how many people are miserable in jobs that stress them out just because they can't bear to let go of the salary it provides. Let me leave you with part of Mother Teresa's revision of the paradoxical commandments. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. The good that you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough, but give the best you have anyway. As you commence into your future, I plead that you follow the values that your parents, your teachers, your coaches, and your God have tried to instill in you. Give the world the best you've got. May God bless each of you and keep you close to him in the palm of his hand. Decide where your treasure is and find your heart there as well.
Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Boudreaux, for your remarks. St. Bernard's is blessed to have you as a teacher, sharing your appreciation for English with your students. Conferral of diplomas. At this time, I invite Bishop McManus, class advisors, Mrs. Rebecca Lachlan, Ms. Kimberly Hilton to the podium for the conferring of the diplomas for the class of 2018. Tara Catherine Keating. Nicholas Dean Bagley. Brian Daniel Hill. Rachel Catherine Wales. Catherine Rose Bigelow. Julie Angela Erickson. Patrick Thomas Bell. Evstratia Constantina Rigopoulos. Sarah Elizabeth Bika. Winona Lynn Daw. Nathan Kwame Bachik Ajman. <laughs> Colleen Emily Barrett. Matthew Samuel Aronson. Nicole Jean Boucher. Nathan Charles Abishan. <laughs> Madison Renee Fougere. <laughs> Nicholas McKean Calvillo. <laughs> Ashley Elizabeth Harris. <laughs> Paul Daniel Couture. Danielle Elizabeth LaFong. <laughs> Kevin Michael Francis Donahue. <laughs> Emma Adelaide Mercier. <laughs> Michael Tyler Gendron. <laughs> Sarah Ann Plume. Campbell Thomas Harrington. Kelsey Christine Rainville. Michael Paul Hendley. Abby Therese Robichon. Michael Patrick Kelly. Kayla Alexis Wade. Sean David McHugh. Joseph Augustine Lelly. Timothy William O'Day O'Connell. Charles Adrian Morris. Matthew Charles Rasmussen. Simeon Paul Ramey. Cameron Nicholas Wilkins. Cameron Steven Sontag. Tian Yu Wu.
At this time, I am honored to introduce Bishop Robert McManus for closing remarks and benediction. In my own name and that of the entire Diocese of Worcester, I offer to the graduates of the class of 2018 my sincerest congratulations and prayers for your success. I have every confidence that with God's grace and the wonderful Catholic education you received here at St. Bernard, you will be successful in all your endeavors. Now please stand for the final prayer and blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us remember in the holy presence of God. Gracious and loving God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we praise and bless you as the giver of all good gifts. This evening, send your Holy Spirit upon these young men and women of St. Bernard Catholic High School, class of 2018. Fill them with your wisdom and grace as they journey forth from their high school experience. Set their hearts on fire for goodness and truth, for peace and justice, for profound respect for the dignity of all people, especially those less fortunate than themselves. Bless them always with compassion and courage to honor the sacredness of life itself. Let their faith in you, dear Lord, always shine radiantly through their very lives, reflecting the command of Christ Jesus, love one another as I have first loved you. Bless their parents and families. We have provided them with the best of Catholic education. We honor their many sacrifices and their constant support. Bless our teachers and school administrators. Bless the staff and volunteers who have encouraged and inspired these graduates day to day throughout these past four years. Keep, up, keep all of us in your loving care this evening as we take our leave on this wonderful day. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come on you and your families, remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. time I'd like to welcome Patrick Bell for a presentation. Good evening. As treasurer of the class of 2018, I would like to unveil our class gift, which is to my right, your left. Um, we are donating benches for the Activity Center and all the sports. Thank you. Remember. I present the St. Bernard Central Catholic High School graduating class of 2018. <laughs> 